So now that we've talked about what a polynomial function is, and we've talked about the degree and a leading coefficient and the end behaviors, we're going to relate these to polynomial functions that we should be very familiar with. The first one is our linear function, which is a polynomial of degree 1. The highest exponent on x is 1. And we know that it, that equation, we commonly call that y equals mx plus b. Um, we could write that with our function notation and call that f at x, f at x, and that would be equal to mx plus b. And the m is really important for us because m is our slope. And the slope tells us our direction of our line. So if the slope was positive, we know our line would head up to the right, and if our slope was negative, it would head down to the right or up to the left. If the slope is zero, it tells us it's a horizontal line. If it happens to be a vertical line, it doesn't follow y equals mx plus b at all. In fact, it's not even a function because it wouldn't pass the vertical line test because it is a vertical line. So that's a case where a linear relationship is not actually a function. It's just the vertical line. All the other ones are functions. Um, the horizontal line actually is a degree of zero, so it doesn't quite fit into our degree one, but I'm going to summarize a couple of things there. Um, just give me a minute and I will type that up. Okay, so I summarized some of those things that we had here. The m is our slope, the b is our y-intercept. If the m, the slope, is positive, it goes up to the right, so you can see that with the picture. If m is negative, the, slope, the line is heading down to the right or up to the left. Now, this is a special case here. If your slope is 0, then actually it's not a degree 1 equation. If your slope equals 0, you end up with an equation of degree 0, since the equation is just y equals B. There's no x's there at all. So this is kind of its own little special case. It doesn't actually fit under a polynomial of degree 1. So we're going to focus on, on the first two where your slopes are positive or your slopes are negative. The other special case is over here. Um, vertical lines have an undefined slope and are not functions since they don't pass the vertical line test. Their equations, instead of y equals b, their equations are x. x equals a number and they don't follow that polynomial format with a y equals and then your leading coefficient times your x to whatever exponent and on down to the constant term. So these ones are special cases and they do not fit in the polynomial function. Now if we think of the lines with these two possibilities, the positive slope or the negative slope, when we talk about our domain, um, as we um, head to the left or to the right, the graph just keeps going forever and ever in both directions. So when we talk about our domain of a linear relationship, our li linear function of degree one, our domain without any context, without the story of like the number of people going to a movie, um, or the cost of printing t-shirts, or all those questions we would have had back in grade nine. Our domain is just any real number. And likewise for our range, our range, again, without any context or a story to go with it, the range will just be any real number again. Um, so that's pretty, pretty standard for a linear relationship. Okay, that was our grade nine work, spending all the time on, on lines, a little bit in grade 10. And then we moved into quadratic functions in grade 10, and we studied them in, again in grade 11. These are our polynomial functions of degree 2 this time. Okay, and we're going to talk about um, the, the, its standard form and what its equation looks like. But I'm just going to um, type in some things here for you. All right, so what I've written here is that the polynomial function um, of degree 2 is what our quadratic function is. And there's three different ways that we can write that algebraically. Um, the polynomials in general, um, if they're written in their standard form, again, the standard form tells us something specific. Our leading coefficient is this a value, and we know that the a tells us the width and the direction of opening. And that's important when we go to graph it or sketch it. Width and direction of opening. Direction of opening. Hopefully you can read that. Direction of opening. And then the only other thing that the standard form tells us, again, is the y-intercept. So just like the y equals mx plus b, the constant term in the 
function of degree 1 is our y-intercept, the, the constant term here in this function is also the y-intercept. So the thing without the x, that constant term, is your y-intercept. And that's important to know. All right, now our vertex form, um, just to review that very quickly, it looks like this. We've got a and then bracket x minus h plus k. It's called the vertex form because it tells us what the vertex is. That h and the k is the vertex. Okay, so you think, switch the sign on the, um, on what you have here. It's x take away 3, then 3 would be the x coordinate of the vertex. And then whatever the k is, if it was a plus 5 on the end, it would be plus 5 as the y coordinate of the vertex. The a value here, is also the width and direction of opening. Okay, so that's consistent between the two formats. Um, the last one I have written down here is the factored form, and our factored form is the one that looks like this. We've got f at x is equal to a, so a still is our width and direction of opening, but this time we're going to have an x minus, and I'll just use the letter r and an x minus s. Different textbooks use different letters. It really doesn't matter what you use there. Um, although S sometimes looks like a 5, so just be careful of that. Um, this one is the one that tells us our x-intercepts or our zeros. So x-intercepts or zeros. And those are, um, if we set each of these factors, so we've been working on factoring um, different polynomials. If we set that factor equal to 0, and I didn't mean to put brackets around that, Take the brackets off there, good. Um, if we set that equal to zero, I would add r to both sides and we get x equals positive r. So that's an x-intercept at r. And then this factor, x minus s, would equal zero. Add s to both sides and we get x equals s. So my two x-intercepts when I have it in factored form like this would be r and s. That a value that right we have here is still our direction and width of opening. Okay, um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, yeah, underline y-intercept, just so you don't confuse that with the, the a's I did in green, the y-intercept is that, that c value there. Okay, um, other things that you need to know about quadratics, um, just as a, a quick recap, if the a was positive, we know it's, if you think if you're positive, you're happy, you're smiling, that problem is going to open up. If the a is a negative value, it's a frown, and our parabola will open down. So I'm just going to type that up as a summary in here as well. Okay, so there's a little box there with if a is positive, it's the, the happy face, so you've got the smile happening, it's opening up. If a is negative, you've got the frown, and it's opening down. So that's important to know. On the next page, I'm just going to summarize some of those characteristics of a parabola that you should know. Um, it's just vocabulary, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, so some of the key characteristics of, of my parabola, which I didn't do a great job at drawing, but <laughs> I tried my best. Uh, this spot here is always called your vertex, so you should know that. So on the previous page, I referred to that as h comma k. Um, these questions, when you're doing ac application questions, you're really looking for um, questions that are talking about finding the maximum or minimum values. Um, you're optimizing. So if you get into questions that ask you to optimize things, you're finding the maximum or minimum, and it's the vertex you're really looking for. Okay, the um, we do have symmetry in parabolas, so we do have a vertical line that cuts a parabola exactly in half. That thing is called the axis of symmetry. Um, it's helpful in terms of finding various things sometimes. It always passes through your vertex. So its equation, because it is a vertical line, it will be x equals and then whatever the x coordinate of the vertex is. And I use the letter h here, so I'm going to use the letter h here. That's the equation for your axis of symmetry. We also have the um, points right here. On the x-axis, those are our zeros or our x-intercepts. That would be like the time that the ball hits the ground. Um, 
They're the break-even points for profit questions. It's where your volume would be equal to zero if you're doing maximizing area questions. So x-intercepts are zeros. Um, the questions would include when the ball hits the ground, the height would be zero. When ball hits the ground, Um, we said the break-even points for profit questions. It's where you have a profit of zero. You're not making money, but you're not losing any money, so we say we're breaking even. Uh, those kinds of questions. The other point that's important to know is this one right here, which is your y-intercept, and that's your initial value, the height from which a ball was thrown. So that's your y-intercept or initial value. Just like we had with um, our exponential functions, the y-intercept was also our initial value. So money questions, it was the principal amount uh, that went into our equation, the y-intercept, the initial value. All right, so you want the height that the ball starts from, um, like was the height it was thrown from, or questions like that. Anyway, that you need to make sure that you understand those, those terms. All right, and that is it for this video.